um, December 2020, I passed away. I had a heart attack. Oh my gosh. And because of COVID, um, the ambulance, I lived in Jersey City. So over there, there was a lot of COVID cases. All the hospitals were full. Um, they literally told my husband, you have to wait for the ambulance to get there. There's no one available right now. And they were helping him with like trying to identify if I was alive or not. So that's how oh he ended God. up knowing that I wasn't. Um, oh my God. I came back from that experience and I took off social media for eight months. And that's when I wrote the book, this book, The Altar Within. Mm-hmm. And while I was there, I don't know if it's because I'm a seer and I'm, and I've gone into visions many times throughout my life. But while I was there, it seemed like an eternity. I'm telling you, I came back and I could not believe that this was real life. I was very disconnected. How from long the do world. you were out for? Not no more than three minutes, he says. Oh my God. It was like, I it was see. like three minutes, but it seemed like a lifetime. But for me, I was out yeah. for years. Like, I <gasps> Tell was us your experience. Like, what did you feel? What did you see? So I start off the book by explaining that I ended up landing like in this really dark space. And it's interesting because a lot of the visions or nightmares that I would have growing up, it was always black, always dark. Mm -hmm. And I would feel like something was coming at me. Like it just was running, 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 trying to get me. And that's what I thought all my life growing up. It was something trying to get me, something trying to get me. The same thing happened when I went in death. I was in the darkness and I felt something running, running, running. And, and, and I would always wake up right in my dreams. This time I had no choice. I, I, I would have to be there. These big, big eyes opened. They were very amber. And then I felt this calmness from those eyes and then everything illuminated. And it was this really big wolf. And this mm. wolf has been trying to contact me my entire freaking life. Wow. And I was so scared of what was hidden in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And the wolf spoke to me and told me that I wasn't really being myself. I wasn't really living an authentic life. It was telling me that I was suffocating myself. It was telling me that I was, I would not have a second choice, a second chance to be who I am if I continue to live this way. Through the wolf, then I was like, plunged into auto underwater. It was really dark, but I can tell it was underwater. And I was just slowly, slowly floating down where I was out of body, but I was also in body. It was like, I was experiencing everything at the same time. And as I was going into the waters, that's when I heard this voice that told me to breathe. Can you imagine being underwater and being told to breathe, take a breath? (sighs) So the surrender that has to happen when you're underwater and they're telling you to take a breath for you to trust is insanely difficult. I remember struggling and I think I spent a lot of time there. Like, no, I'm not opening my mouth. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way. And then I was yeah. just like, I can't stay here. I have to trust. There was always this, this embracing voice that kept telling me, trust, believe it's okay. You're okay. And I finally opened my mouth and I took a breath and it's like the whole ocean went inside of me. And that's when the journey started for me in death, where I started speaking to my ancestors. When I started speaking to people, I had no idea. There were like star beings there. There were animals. (laughs) I love this. Oh my gosh. It's kind of like, you know, when you dream Mm -hmm. and you go from one dream to the other. Yeah. Yeah. It's like different worlds. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. Sorry. Cause it, yeah. that's what they say is like another dimension, right? Because you, you're you're not in one location. It's, you're yeah. not in one location. It's just mm-hmm. ridiculous. There's no way that your brain can comprehend it. So the surrender that has to happen is the human surrender. Is a surrender of everything you've been taught, of the limits that you've been t- teaching yourself. That you you have you know limits, and you are unlimited. You can, you have unlimited potential. You are so powerful and you're capable of so many things, but because we're raised in a certain way, you know, we're way, we're raised in a certain way where we don't access that power, where we don't access that faith, that surrender. Um, we go through life, um, really half-assing everything and, and our potential and, our, and a divine purpose. So under there, when I finally surrendered, I've never gone back before that. I've been surrendered since. And I really feel that that surrender is what helped me write this book. That surrender is what helped me manifest everything. I've manifested incredible things since I've come back. And I've always been a really good manifester, but this is insanely different from buying my first home. I'm 41 years old and this happens Mm -hmm. 
now. Um, wow. I have a publishing company, I'm a multiple bestseller. Like there's so many beautiful, oh, I got engaged after freaking 12 years of waiting. <laughs> Congrats. You know? Wow. That's amazing. Like life just changed for you. Everything right, changed right after. and I yeah. totally changed. I used to be someone that plans and plans and plans. I have, I still have some of it. I have vision boards on top of vision boards. I have boxes with dreams and, and bucket lists. I have all of these things. And what that surrender helped me identify when I came back is who the hell am I doing this for? Who am I doing all these things for? Why am I planning all this? Where's the root of my actions? Where's the root of what I do on a daily basis of how I think of how I create? So I dissected myself. I went into a lot of introspection. Um, I, and I investigated, I interrogated every single part of my life from what I wore to what I ate to how I self-harmed. You know, we talk about self-harm and mm-hmm. it's something that a lot of what, people don't want to talk about, but things like doing things that do not support you is self-harm. Things like not paying attention to your body, your mental state and your self-care is self-harm. I know it's a strong word, but there is an essence of it. So for me, I was able to look back and tell myself, girl, you are hurting yourself. Mm. And you know what? It's okay to now be aware of it. So what are we going to do to move forward? Whereas before I was such a great planner, but I wasn't really consistent and I couldn't finish everything. Now, anything that I plan comes from the heart, comes from my truth. And I've Mm. been able to be consistent. I've been able to find rest and while I'm doing all the things that I love. And I've also been able to manifest things that are supportive of my dreams and the things that I want to accomplish in life. That is so inspiring. Wow. Wow. <laughs> is, so I know that's a crazy journey. Ah. It is. And, and, and in terms of like the actionable parts, you said you interrogated all the parts of yourself. Like, who am I doing this for? I think that's a really good exercise. And I think I, I'm going to try to do more of that because you, you're doing all these things. You have all these goals and plans, but like, who really is it for? And who is yeah. it for? Those eight months... First, the first couple of months was really hard because I had to come back to earth, like literally ground, come back to my body. I actually believed that I was still dead. I was like, this is <laughs> probably heaven for me because I'm with wow. my husband. I have a house and I have my, I, yeah. it was like, I, I lost, I lost my mind. I lost my shit. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry. it's okay. I <laughs> get it. And you're already, like you said, Pisces or cancer, you have all that dreaminess in you already. Yes. So coming back, I was like, you can, my, the only people who had access to me was my immediate family my elders from my tribe, the the shamans and healers, they would come and see me and, you know, talk to me and, and, and let me know it's okay. You're fine. You're here. And I couldn't comprehend it. I was just like, Mm -hmm. no, leave me alone. Like, it's okay. And and, and they were like, it's you. It's just a different you. And I'm like, no, it's Mm -hmm. not me. It was just, I couldn't explain to them everything that I had gone through and everything that I just understood. Um, and I had this fear within me. I was like, I'm going to forget everything that I just learned in death because I'm going to ground and come back to my body. I had this understanding that the expansive universe cannot fit in this brain, in this human (laughs) brain of yours. Imagine if you at all times understood and were connected to the expansive universe there's it's insanity yeah that's hard it, yeah it, it's, you're not built that way to be experiencing that here on earth but you are part of all of it so i was really coming to a place of calm and peace where i understood that i would never lose that connection and it was okay for me to start forgetting a little bit because it was good for the health of my humanness 